this life Try to catch me hollering at the moon apple and my other tooth came out like a tooth came out and I'm thinking that's it I'm all done and after the after the RV uh, you know burned up and my tooth came out I'm going, you know what I gotta do something I have to do something now I said I'm just gonna buy a motorcycle and I'm gonna ride to, to, to Bolivia and I'm gonna get my teeth fixed and that's it adventure series and things like that and everybody knows that there's a team of about you know 20 or 30 people and there's helicopters and there's you know there's a huge budget and and, and what this film is about is it's based on my selfie videos with these ancient old but even before GoPro I mean every day I would get up and I, and I wouldn't know where I was going to be spending the night it wasn't like I had a team. It was like I'm really out there with my butt flying in the air, going from one point to the other. There's a lot more in here, Dave. Oh, there's a lot more to do. You only scratch the surface, okay? And the whole intention started with me getting my teeth fixed, and then after Paraguay, my teeth got fixed. And I mean, Let's but, see. Wow. And nice they don't girl. come out. And it's like it was like I got it done for one tenth of what it, what it would what it cost here. And that was the intention, that's why it's called the tooth journey. You know, it's, it's like if I can do it, anybody can do it. And that's the, that's the message, that's the real message. Looking at, looks like date palms off in the distance, in, interspersed with, uh, looks like lots and lots of sugar cane. Introduction to Monterey Bay. Take a look at this, would ya? We've seen orcas. We think they're orca fins. Certainly gray dolphins. And certainly this otter fellow with a tag on him. Look at the red tag he's got on his foot. He's got a, he's got a red and a purple. Yep. And around here we've seen, this is like a kelp forest in the water. And there are we're just outside the break. There are surfers over there. Saw a fellow, several divers. That's called Lover's Point. And right there is Lover's Point. And uh, yeah, this is just spectacular, gorgeous. All right. Signing off. This is me signing off live from Nuevo Mundo in Monterey Bay.
This is the Terranova Explorer, me, the Wizard of Wonder, in old Mexico in Baja, in Ensenada. And I just thought I would show you how wonderful it is here to be here in old Mexico. It, what? What's this? This looks like the Terranova Explorer in a parking lot. What's this? Oh, that looks like a Home Depot. Yeah, and, and, a, and an Office Max. And a, a Galleria. And a Especial Zapateria. And, and what's that? That, why, that looks like it's a Walmart Supercenter. Look, there's the flag, the Mexican flag over there. There it is, flying over top of the Home Depot. Yeah. Well, if this keeps up, Old Mexico looks like California is keep creeping south. At least that's here in Ensenada. Anyway, I'm heading south. Riding here on our motor snickel. Uh, take a look at the at that group. It was about 175 miles, 200 and some odd kilometers. Beautiful looking. There's there's Rafi. Hey Rick. Hey Rafi. Montano. Here's my bike. <laughs> Montano. There's the Montano party wagon with the uh, whale baleen on the top of it. Fishing rods, oars. I think he's even got an anchor over here. There's an anchor. And there is Tabo. And here we are. It owes to Tipaquillo. What a what a ride! What a great ride! 16th of January, and we're having a little problems, not many. Uh, just dis a distributor problem with the with the vehicle there, and so I'm about to tow the uh, auto, the VW. Thing, the BW beach buggy there with my motorcycle up to the mechanic. And now, it's not like we don't know where it is. It's only around the corner. But I figured this would be a fun video because I'm about ready to tow with the motorcycle. <laughs> okay, we already saw the mechanic once, and it's a distributor problem. It's pretty simple. But uh, yeah, so here's what's gonna look like. KLR 650, 16th January 2012, as a tow truck. Yeah.
April the uh, 15th, which is everybody's favorite day, I know. After walking down the street, uh, passing uh, about a, I don't know, a mile of shops, I finally arrived and I'm viewing Lake Atitlan, Lago de Atitlan. So here it is. Little cobblestone streets and shop after shop after shop, <laughs> restaurant after restaurant after restaurant. So apparently, I stopped at the right spot. Till next time, I'll get down there and give you a good look at the lake. Didn't have any fun there. I did finally make it to Liberdad and had a uh, a little uh, two tortas for buck. That was my finest experience here. Esta aquí es Zacatecas. Zacatecoluca. Zacatecoluca is where I am. And I went to the Banco de America Central and tried to use my card. No luck. It says no money. And then I went into the other uh, La Un Pensar Dominion Don Juan, or where the fuck it is, and uh, asked. Uh, there are three uh, card places in there. None of them gave me any money. To so the next stop, I was told that I wouldn't need any more dollars, so I changed all my dollars into. Honduran money, and then I get over here, and the Secretary of Governor of Justice says non Central America pays three dollars in U.S. So now instead of paying three, and now I pay fifty uh, in whatever it was. So now that was just to get my passport stamped. So this is the Honduras side. That's how they do it here. After you have to pay more U.S. for the other pay. Yeah. I have to pay more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask it, ask it. So now Keep I'm it. told that I have to pay more in U.S. And uh, I was told that I get, I, I told them I, I didn't, I was changing all my money, but now it's changed. Now the deal is I need U.S. money. Yeah. Yeah. So now I've uh, completed all my stuff to enter in Nicaragua. That took about an hour and a half. And everywhere you go, they want money. But now I have uh, all the papers that I need. It's now 4.30 and I'm, enter I'm entering the country of Nicaragua. Got some gasoline, heading towards San Carlos, where it's supposed to be an easier border crossing. And uh, this idiot right here just beeped at me, uh, said, uh, You're in Nicaragua because I'm sitting there at the gas station. So I don't know what the 
what the deal is here, but uh, people around here are impolite. Uh, and yet, you find some nice people too. But uh, there are people who just, they just don't, uh, they just don't see it, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of compassion for each other around here. That's the bottom line. Uh, anyway, so I'm on my way to San Carlos. The driving in Nicaragua is weird, crazier, weird, uh, more aggressive drivers. Got online this morning and found out that the border crossing at uh, San Carlos and Los Chiles is a much easier border crossing, and that's what I want. So that's where I'm going. Till next time, goodbye. So I'm going to use the planks that the people are walking on. Interesting, isn't it? They're paying more money and getting more paperwork done and all the rest of that crap. I'm finally free to go. Now oh, here's the beautiful river. The beautiful river Sixola, which separates the, uh, it's the, boundary line between the country of Costa Rica and Panama on the south eastern region. April 26 on the road between Shariki Grande and da David, there's a beautiful little hospital, Echo Hospital, called Lost and Found. The Lost and Found. And here's this gentleman's going to give us a little rundown. My name is Anthony. Prepare for the rundown. Map of the whole property right on that wall. Right here on the wood is a, a map of all the hiking trails. We also have a photo, photocopied uh, copies of that as well, so you can take it with you. Um, along this wall, all the tours that we offer. Um, night hike with Gabriel and the jungle hike with Gabriel. Gabriel is our uh, local jungle hike expert. He grew up around here. He's, uh, he's the jungle whisperer. So if you want to go around and explore, at night, the wild. Very cool. He's the guy to go with. Very cool. Um, we have a kitchen here for everybody to use. Um, everything's run on a credit system, so before you take anything, you just put a little mark on your sheet, and it's basically like your credit card for the whole stay. You pay when you go. Um, downstairs, the fridge, same deal. You take everything off that you take. Um, everything's pretty much fully stocked, so you are you are welcome to bring all your own food. Places to store it right down here. Little guest fridge right over there. Um, if you want to come down, I'll show you where the dorms are as well as the private room. What's up with that? The owner is a, uh, not a Freemason, but he, uh, he gets a kick out of all that kind of stuff. Okay. So you'll see some, uh, some interesting paint around the way. A little direct trail to the toilets right in here. There's also a pee-only toilet here. When it's raining, we open it up so you don't have to 
make your way all the way down when it's real cool. wet and slippery. Um, okay, what makes this down here pretty simple. Real quick, what makes this place special? Um, well, it's in the middle of nowhere, and there's awesome people coming through all the time. From? And I'm from all over. And I mean, I'm from a big city, so I get a kick out of being out in the middle of nowhere. Actually being in nature. How much, real, a real jungle instead of a concrete jungle. How much food do you grow here that you consume? Um, I'm not sure exactly how much. The garden was right up the, right up the way. Um, we get the coffee from an organic coffee farm um, down the road a bit. Um, we also do organic coffee tours. Um, Don Kune is the farmer down there. He has a big, big organic coffee, uh, organic farm with pretty much, it seems like a garden of Eden. Very cool. Let's make this the Reader's Digest for you. What's your, what's your website? <laughs> Uh, the website is, I don't know what the website is. It's, it's Boston, Boston, Boston Found Panama and Google and Bing. Boston Found, Boston Found, Boston and Panama and Google it. And there you are. Piece of cake. All right, that's it. Brick out. May 7th, 2 p.m. Uh, I just went to the another end of the road, which is La Guira, uh, Panama, which is west or I should say east of, east or south, however you want to think of it, of Porto Belo. I'll uh, give you a little ride here. You don't have to put on a face. Behind, that I'm talking about right behind me right now 
Uh, they got they don't they really do not like to have their pictures taken so you know that, that's why I can't really t stop and take a bunch of them but there's like all kinds of military presence around here and there's the the bike with all my gear on it and uh, so they get a, they get a kick out of seeing me Last time I got stepped over, pulled over by the national police, eh, maybe 10, 15 miles back. And there were four of them. They're all wearing brand new fatigues, Atlas packs, the whole bit. I'm trying to get a picture of that APC thing down there. Oh, it's the. Uh, thunder in the background so I'm hoping to get a picture of that APC I, I, I'm not going to stand there and make it look like I'm taking pictures of the APC guy because they, they don't like that and I'm just <clears throat> having a cough and a, a asthma <clears throat> Bouts of asthma. So he's passing by the natural, obviously a natural store here. And I uh, bought some man recommended anise and he gave me a bottle of uh, medicine to help break up the inflammation. So this guy's a, a medicinal doctor, uh, originally from the indigenous Putamayo in uh, Colombia. So, and this is his, on the back wall there, he's got his protection, you know, <coughs> protections, a tiger, the feather of a eagle, and the tiger claws. So this is what he does for a living now. Sells natural and indigenous medicine. done with the entering Ecuador. I'm in Ecuador and just got my chain adjusted at a uh, motorcycle shop. So I thought I'd give you a sight to behold here. And I'm not in, not quite in Ibarra, but uh, on the way to Ibarra, from the border and route to Ibarra. So look at, look at the road. Look at what I'm looking at way off in the distance. Yes, that is a snow-covered peak. And yes, it's probably the peak of a volcano. Cotopaxi, I'm not sure. Titicaca, Titihaha was corrected. It is now, it's pronounced Titihaha. And this is that vast grasslands out there. It's mostly where the Euros people live and they use those reeds for everything. Tomorrow I will be taken off to Copacabana and I will see Lake Titihaha from the other end from the Bolivian end.
order uh, two bottles of juice, yes. two bags of coca leaves, and one uh, stick of dynamite with the fuses and um, uh, ammonium nitrate, please. Okay. Thank you very much. This is two juices? Yes. Two juices? Um, two bags of coca. <laughs> Second, 2012, and I'm in the small town of Hohenau on my motorcycle, and look what I got, new teeth, well, almost. These are like the mock-ups. These are just temporary, but the guy spent like hours making my temporary teeth work well. There's the people around here are craftsmen, and they give a crap about their trade. They have pride in what they do, and they're really good at what they do. And guess what? That comes before money. It's so important today. 